Welcome back everyone. Hope you're having a good Thursday. Today I decided to go back into uh, some stacks of boxes that I've got off screen and wanted to open up a few packs of 1990 Max. Of course, if you remember, I think it was sometime last year, I purchased a box of 1990 Max off of eBay and we've just been kind of slowly opening that box. I kind of want to build a base set of this. I do have a factory set of this somewhere with the album and everything, but I pulled it out of my shed last year, and a lot of the cards have kind of uh, been exposed to the elements, so I want to kind of redo that set all over. So here is your 1990 Max Race Cards uh, Wax Pack, if you will. 15 drivers, or 15 collector cards, drivers, teams, and action. And it has a number three on it, so I don't know if that means this is like the third printing or the third release. There were a lot of errors in the early sets, especially of 89, 90, 91 Max. I don't think 89 had any corrected errors that I recall, but the 90 and 91 Max had a lot of error problems. There you see a little um, notification about Winston Cup scene. Send name and address for a free sample copy of number one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Max Race Card Catalog, and produced by the JR Max Company. So obviously no, no odds or print runs on these packs because there were no specialty cards to pull. It was strictly all 100% base set. You see the back is a bright yellow. The front is very 90-ish with the uh, black border, but with this kind of a neon green style of framework around the pictures. This is, uh, we're going to start off with Ken Thompson. He's somebody with Hendrick Motorsports, as you can see. And the back, okay, this is an all-pro card. He's a fabricator. Backs of the cards are bright yellow. It does have a little line for people that want to get autographs on the back. Most of us in this hobby enjoy getting them on the front. There's Robert G. Of course, that's Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s grandfather. But he's a legendary uh, body guy over the years. Lots of good stories on him on all the podcasts out there. You just have to you just have to find him. Norman Koshimishu, longtime gas man. Worked for Raymond Beetle's team and later Robert Yates Racing. Junior Johnson, no introduction needed there. We all know who he is. Chuck Ryder was the owner of the 30 uh, car that Michael Waltrip drove for many years. Then later Johnny Benson. Jimmy Hensley, 1992 Cup Series Rookie of the Year. This would have been during his Bush Series days. Les Richter, who formerly played with the Los Angeles Rams and then would go on to become one of the top-ranking NASCAR officials. Legendary Harry Hyde, crew chief for many, many different drivers. During this time, he's crew chief for um, Bobby Hillen in the Stavola car because this would have been a picture from 1989, 1990. Of course, he was still crew chief with Stavola Brothers when Hillen was with the Snickers car. Uh, the character Harry Hogg in the movie Days of Thunder was loosely based off of Harry Hyde. Billy Engel, who was a crew chief for Michael Waltrip for many years, went to Diamond Ridge Racing in 1996 to become a crew chief and tried to have an aspiring driving career in the Bush Series, but that did not pan out. Here's longtime Bush Series driver Tommy Houston. Rick Mast. This would have been about the time that Rick was starting his cup career and kind of winding down the Bush career. Early card of Bobby Hamilton there. And gentleman Ned Jarrett. I'm trying to see what his jacket just... It's just the Bush beer jacket. Of course, Ned was a longtime representative for the Bush beer co company. Go to pack number two. We'll, we'll rip through these kind of quick. Hopefully we can find some other drivers and legends and so forth. And these are really nice to get autographed. You see they're... Not even really semi-glossy, but they're really great for autographs. James Luter, machinist. Barry Dotson, longtime Jackman and crew chief for a number of different teams. There's Shauna Robinson. I believe that may be her rookie card. But this is when she was in the Goodies Dash series. Pretty sure that's her rookie. L.D. Ottinger, longtime Bush Series driver. There's Robert Yates. We mentioned him a few minutes ago. Team owner for Davey Allison. And then later Dale Jarrett and Ernie Irvin and many others. Dick Beatty, another high-ranking NASCAR official for many years. Steve Grissom, 1993 Bush Series champion. 
Patty Moise. She is the former Bush Series driver, but also the wife of NASCAR official and former driver Elton Sawyer. Jack Pennington, dirt track star out of Pennsylvania. Probably could have had a good NASCAR run if he'd been with the better team, but he just, just never did get that opportunity. Bud Moore. Bud was actually part of the... Uh, he was in World War II. I believe it was the D-Day invasion over there in Germany that he was in. I may be wrong. I've... I've heard enough podcasts and stories about it, but he uh, definitely was a military hero in many, many respects, and came into NASCAR in the 50s, and stayed there till about 1997 when he had a full list team, has to, has, uh, was actually a championship car owner for Joe Weatherly back in, I think it was 62. Jack Ingram, of course, we recently lost Jack this year, former two-time Bush Series champion, Xfinity, whatever you want to call it nowadays. It wasn't even called Bush Series back then. Benny Parsons, one of the best uh, color guys or analysts on ESPN, later NBC after the 2001 TV deal. Jack Root, who still sporadically has some programs on. He's got a podcast called You Don't Know Jack. Has some really good interviews. And former e, uh, former MRN and TNN NASCAR play-by-play -play guy Eli Gold. I believe he, I wonder. If, I think Eli still may do uh, uh, Alabama games uh, for college football. I know he was a big Alabama guy, so we'll go from there. Felix Sabatis, who a few years ago got out of NASCAR when he sold the remainder of his team to Chip Ganassi, who ironically is getting out this year. Former Bush Series driver Ronald Cooper has one win. I believe it was in 1988, maybe at Lanier or Gainesville or somewhere. It's a short track. I'm drawing a blank on it, but he has one career win in a family-owned car. Career never really did pan out. Here is the championship, the all-time crew chief uh, with the most champions. Eight championships, seven with Richard Petty, one with Terry Labonte. Richard Broom, longtime Hendrick Motorsports associate. Worked uh, as a crew chief for Kenny Schrader for a few years. Here's Phil Barkdahl. Phil ran in NASCAR for a handful of years. Only ran two or three races a year, mostly the speedways. Uh, his son Steve Barkdahl has been a spotter for a number of years. Hey, there's Larry Mack. Of course, he is a uh, Fox guy. Fox guy now. He does a lot of analyst work and crew chief type work working with data and trends and, and, and that sort of thing on their broadcast. So he has a lot of a lot of great information there. There's Doug Reichert. I believe Doug is currently employed by MB is it MBM? How they call it? yeah MBM Motorsports Business Management team owned by Carl Long. Kind of rotates around on their teams as crew chief. Robin Pemberton, I believe Robert <coughs> excuse me, I believe Robin is a NASCAR official now. There's a lot of Pemberton, so it's hard to keep track of them all. Stan Barrett, former Hollywood stuntman, ran a handful of NASCAR races in the 80s and 90s. His son Stanton occasionally races NASCAR and is also a stuntman. Sterling Marlin, this was during his time at Billy Hagen Racing. Butch Miller, this almost looks like one of his, yeah, this is one of his ASA uniforms. And they would just slap stickers on it when they'd come up and run a Bush race or a cup race. Bush, Butch did run the full, or tried to run the full schedule in 19... Was it 90? Yeah, 1990 for Travis Carter was released near the end of the year. He only had one top 10 finish that year at Pocono. Slick Poston, I believe he was an engine guy. Or gear specialist. I knew, knew he was some kind of specialist. And then we have a checklist. So this has cards 1 through 89. That's kind of weird. I thought it was going to go 1 through 100. But we just go 1 through 89 on checklist 1. And then we will have our final pack of the day here. Get you guys off and rolling for your Thursday. Bob Whitcomb, former NASCAR team owner. Of course, Bob was the winning car owner of the 1990 Daytona 500. Cliff Champion, longtime crew chief in the NASCAR ranks. I believe his only uh, points paying win came in 1984 in Atlanta with Benny Parsons as crew chief. Let's see what his stats show. He has two wins, 1985, but I can't remember who that came with. So 1984, yeah, that was Benny's win. But 1985, that's an anomaly because I can't think it. Greg Sachs was the only driver that had one win in 1985 that comes to mind. 
that would have been an oddball winner because Kale had two, Bill had 11, Daryl had three, Harry had three, Terry Labonte had two, Ricky Rudd had one. Who else won an 85? Dale Earnhardt had four. Neil Bonnet had two. That pretty much covers all the winners, and I don't remember Cliff Champion being a crew chief on any of those guys. So Dale Jarrett, this is 1989 uniform, when he was driving for Kale Yarbrough Motorsports, of course in 1990, after Neil Bonnet was injured at Darlington in the spring, Dale would take over the 21 car. Mr. September, Harry Gant, kind of a career, second career here. Uh, when it was rejuvenated, uh, teaming with Leo Jackson in the 33 Skull Car. Brandon Baker. I can't remember if he's related to the uh, Buddy and, and Buck Baker and all them or not. I'm kind of drawing a blank. The youngest son of Buddy Baker. Okay, so he is the son of Buddy Baker. I couldn't remember. Just had a brief run in NASCAR. Here's Bob Tullius, only Group 44 Pontiac. Of course, Bob was an owner in the IMSA Campbell GTP Series in the late 80s, owning the uh, Group 44 Jags, Greg Sachs. This would have been when he was driving for Tom Winkle in the 48 Dinner Bell Pontiac. Greg was kind of a journeyman driver. He only had three seasons that he ran the whole year, which was 1984, 1994, and I'm blanking out on the other one. Maybe he only had two full seasons. But 1984, he ran his own team. 1994, he ran for Jasper or DK Ulrich. And I want to say the third season... He had a lot of seasons where he ran a lot of the races, but never. those were the only two that I come to mind. So I'm, I, he maybe he ran a third season, but I'm just drawing a blank on it. Uh, Mike Beam, longtime crew chief. Uh, he works for SRX now, I believe. Hut Strickland, uh, he was recently on an ish episode of the Scene Vault podcast. A lot of great information there, so I recommend you go back and listen to that one. There's Leo Jackson, talked about him, car owner for Harry Gant. See so here there at North Wilkesboro, and that looks like Brett Bodine's car driving by in the background. Dick Trickle, who is the 1989 Cup Series Rookie of the Year, and to date the oldest Rookie of the Year at age 48, being intervi interviewed by TSN, which I believe is a Canadian sports channel. Dave Marcus, longtime independent owner driver. Rick Wilson, journeyman driver, spent a lot of years driving for Morgan McClure during their building team uh, building years. Uh, went to drive for Raymock and Stavola's Richard Petty. Never really had a lot of success. Best career finish 1988 at Daytona in the Pepsi Firecracker 400. Runner up to Bill Elliott. Jimmy Horton, of course, you've seen recently. Uh, a couple months ago, we had a TTM from Jimmy. Um, Longtime dirt racer, was a speedway specialist in ARCA, never really got a big break in NASCAR, and our final card of the day, Mike Alexander, of course this would have been after Mike was injured at the Snowball Derby in late 88, early 89, of course he replaced Bobby Allison at the Stavola Brothers team after he was, after Bobby was injured in Pocono in 1988, Mike replaced him, had two top five finishes, six top tens in the last half of the season, was slated to drive the 84 car. They switched number from 12 to 84 because that's what Alexander always raced. Mike uh, had some head injuries, came and raced the Daytona 500, and then just backed out. He did run nine races, I believe, in 1990 for Bobby Allison as a car owner, but ultimately decided to call it a career. Mike's son, Justin, is actually Austin Dillon's crew chief today, so a little bit of information for some of you guys that may not have known that. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. We, we're going to start doing these a little more often. I really like this, opening these older packs, talking about some of the guys that raced back in the late 80s, early 90s, some of the crew chiefs, some of the car owners, some of the teams, etc., etc. Because we hear so much today about Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin and a lot of the stars today, but a lot of these guys are what got you to where we are today and helped uh, kind of change the way NASCAR is. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the likes, the subs, the comments, etc., etc. Really do appreciate it. So we'll just keep building this and having fun and, you know, ripping packs and seeing what we can pull. So enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks for watching.